So to make this shape, I'm just adding in a uh, loop with Control R. So Control R, and then you can add some loops. Actually, this isn't really a tutorial. It's more just modeling jam. But something like that. Then we can extrude it. We can go like that. So, some legs to do here. Those could be maybe, I don't know, 24 side, squished a little bit. ball over this side. I'm, I'm planning to try to do some sculpting on this one and I'm not really a sculptor but I will try. I will let's see how it goes. Oops. Um, we could get this stuff P to separate it onto a new object and then mirror it. And where did it mirror to, I wonder? Why does it do that? I need to fix that actually. Hmm. Hello Illuminati. We are, I'm doing well here. Making a little crabby. Man, I just watched that the talk from Captain Dis Disillusion on the uh, the Blender fr from the Blender conference, and that was a pretty. It was kind of inspiring talk and very entertaining. It's probably the most entertaining talk about a 3D software that I've ever seen and very funny uh, yeah I was really surprised by it kind of I think that's sort of one of the reasons why I was a little bit late to the stream today I, I sort of got distracted and didn't forgot what I was doing so I blame him it's his fault but yeah man do you guys watch his um, channel, Captain Disillusion? I never, I never saw his channel, but apparently he he's got a million subscribers. I just don't know anything about YouTube, but yeah, he's definitely um, good. Like I, I like how he. It never got boring at at any point. Even when he's talking about technical things, he he makes it interesting by he just be really snarky and sarcastic at some points with some of the I guess the pitfalls of the Blender UI and I was loving that stuff. I was just cracking up how some of it is so. Um, I don't know. He 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 does it a lot better than I could ever do it. That's really hard to do though, to to make a 3D software into a sort of a show. Like how he did that Pretty cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
So uh, my goal or my plan here is to first block out everything like this and then start to uh, sculpt over this stuff. So I'm not sure if this will work. We shall see. So we're testing here. Actually, what's pretty good for this is um, active element, because then you can pick pick this piece last and rotate around it. It just makes it easier to rotate when you got um, limbs like this. Oops. Maybe I can separate this out and so again if I were to fill this up and pick this last face then I can rotate around it really handy like that his back legs are kind of chubby huh wait Come back here. No. Ah. And they sit. These ones sit about here. These, one, these ones are over. What the hell? Here. And then there's the last one is over here. This is weird. These these all look really round and flat, but Not sure how to describe those. Maybe they're really flat like that. But they're also a little bit chubbier in the center. So let me save this before it dies. Grab. Oops. Oops, I did not mean, mean to make a crab folder. Okay. Um. Let me pop this out here, so I'm not looking over like a fiend. Alright, and this can go over here. Okay, so let's test out, let's 
little sculpting pie here. Mm hmm. So now that we have that base, that base, then we can start to smooth them out. And I love this uh, Dino Topo sculpt because it gives you the geometry where you just right where you need it. It's really handy. And then we have all this stuff here. There is probably a better way to do this. Um, would snake hook do it? What if I zoom in a little bit? Man, that's so cool. All right. Maybe I'll just keep stick with grab. Thumb. What is thumb? Ooh. That's cool. I think I want mat cap. And I want different mat cap. Let's get the Ooh. What about this one? I really like this one. Hmm. Let's go like that. Oops. Maybe grab is better. Grab seems to be a lot stronger than thumb. And like I said, I'm not a sculptor, so if you know of a better way to do this or better tool, please let me know. Ooh. So grab, I don't think, uh, Grab does the dy dynamic topology, which is actually a nice thing because I don't want it to be adding in more extra geometry. I like having it sort of dense around the, where the, where we have the little details, but then pretty pretty chill in the in the other areas. So that that's definitely nice. Smooth, I think smooth. Let me see if smooth, no, smooth doesn't, smooth also does not affect the topology, which is good. Blob does affect it, okay. So blob affects it. Do I need all this extra crap back here? I don't know. Hello, 1K. We're making a little crab today. Oops. Damn it, what did I do? Okay, so let's see if we can do the same thing here with the arms and and maybe I love that we can just separate. So now this is isolated from the other stuff, and that means we when we sculpt on it. Let's go to sculpt. Oops. We sculpt on it should make it so we don't interfere with the other pieces it's kind of like masking off the, the part you you need and um, let's see maybe like that a little bit rounder and then we also have very pointy little spikes here. Man, that's cool. It's really great that you can just drag that right off the... and it adds in the geometry right there for you. So again, let's... if you guys haven't 
tried the dy dynamic topology, it's actually adding in geometry on the fly. That's so cool. Okay. And I went the wrong way, I think. Let's see. I'm going to smooth this out with shift. That'll calm it down a little bit. Do the same thing over here with just shift. Make it smoother. Hi, US votes. Uh, yeah, we're using tablet here for, for everything, actually. I use tablet for regular polygon modeling and and for sculpting and everything. Actually, I don't really sculpt, but this is pretty nice. We're also using the dy dynamic sculpting, dynamic topology, so you can change the, the resolution of it by just hitting it with any brush. So if we go clo really close in, for example, and hit it, it's going to start to do um, add in extra geometry for us like that. That's really nice. Okay. This is probably old news for a lot of Blender people, but it's cool to me. Um, what else can we do? Clay. So I'm just trying to do the overall shape of what's going on. Oh my god, this... Okay, I'll save it. Here we go. Hello? Hello? No? Okay. Snake cook here. I hope there's no sculptors watching this because they're probably laughing. Okay, what about this piece here? I think I can separate this one off too. So I just hit P to separate that off. Then we can get into sculpting again here. Oops. So let me, maybe I'll just hit it with uh, draw just to give it some geometry so what what basically what's happening here is we have very simple geometry from the just the polygon block out and then I'm adding in a bunch more just by um, hitting it with the sculpt any sculpting brush I guess will do this with dynamic topology and then Looks a little bit more organic, I think. Okay. And then 
this one. Also, let's split this off and do the sculpting on that. one same thing just hit this um, hit P and then I mean I'm testing out this new menu which has a well it's a pie it's part of my regular selection pie but it's got a sculpt mode now which um, brings you into sculpt mode and also turns on dynamic topology automatically and what else does it do I think that's it it just turns on dy dynatopo because I love dynatopo so I'm trying to and I usually turn that on, I think. So I'm trying to make it a little bit faster. Um, so that that's that. Normally, if you're if you're using Blender, you would just go to. Um, let me show you the normal way that you would do it. So you grab your your piece here. Let's say you want to sculpt on this uh, the leg over here. You could press 5 and then separate and so uh, just separate selection and then you would go into object mode pick that and then you would go into the sculpting mode over here and then this is regular sculpting mode but you can also turn on in the sculpting settings there's this dino topo so you would check that on and then you get a bunch of errors and then you would say okay and then you'd be able to do it so this menu it just does that and it doesn't throw the error so it's just really quick it just goes straight into sculpt mode with dinotopo and then you can go straight away like that um Hi 1K. I don't know any good bone tutorials. Sorry. I don't. Maybe somebody else knows. Nuclear divide. Saying is the mirror holding up correctly with dynamic? Yeah, it doesn't seem to work with dynamic, but it it does work with um, polygons. So if we have uh, something here and we go live mirror. Oh shoot! Let me turn all this crap on. It does work in edit mode now, which is pretty sweet for. This is new in 2.8, I think uh, maybe a couple weeks old. That, that's really nice. A lot of a lot of the modifiers are starting to work in edit mode now, like uh, subdivision also work. Oh, that's new. We can see the the edges on the actual subdivided mesh. That's that is new. I wonder when they added that. Okay, and then what else? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, thanks, Pedro. Thank you. And top channel says, "What can't you modo?" I don't understand what that means. What can't you modo? <laughs> What else do we have here? Mm. Do you guys use Blender to sculpt? Or do you mostly do, um, whatchamacallit, polygon modeling? I feel like certain things make more sense to sculpt, like this, this guy, probably. I, I would not want to polygon model all of this crap in here. He's got some interesting, like, um, wrinkles on his forehead, on his bald head, too. Um, let me see. Let's go back into scope mode. Let's try maybe this. 
the creasing brush will work here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very nice. Maybe smaller. That looks a bit wonky because these polygons are so big and then these are so... Maybe I need to zoom out a little bit. But it's a pretty small detail in there. Maybe I should... Um, make, make the back a little bit higher res so here let's give it a little bit of resolution back here so we can and then I can smooth it which will make it a little bit rounder really gently and then hopefully with the with this extra geometry when we crease it it's not as jarring maybe smaller oh god Oops. Oh my god. Okay, save it. Crap. Victor says, what do you mean by mirroring and dinotopo? I mean that um, these guys over here that have dinotopo on, Oh, you're right. They do mirror fine. What was I talking about? Wait, is it sculpt mode? Oh, it's sculpt mode. Hmm. So something about being in sculpt mode is um, messing up the mirror, I guess. Let me see if there's any other options here that we're missing. Nope. Hide, mask, and optimize this. What does that mean? Yeah, it doesn't seem to work in sculpt mode unless we go to Hmm. Maybe it's this this stuff here. Oh, I didn't know we had that. Okay. Anyway, it you you can do symmetry sculpting if it's all one giant piece right here like we're we're sculpting here um oops. on both sides just fine. If you use Dinotopo, it disables mirror because it has its own symmetrize option. Oh, okay, okay. And yes, Craig, I've, I remember Mr. I miss, I remember Miss Rattray. I don't, I don't know if I had Mr. Vincent. I, I had Miss Rattray. She was amazing. <laughs> Our AutoCAD teacher in high school 
was this like where was she from she was like a caribbean supermodel she was super tall and she always had high heels on and full makeup and like had crazy clothes and stuff super tall let me see she'd be like all right class we're gonna have to draw out a polyline now make sure you turn on the snapping We're going to have one, two, three vertices. Um, yeah, I miss, I miss, uh, miss Ray. Let's see what else. Nuclear Divide says he uses MS Paint spray can. MS Paint's pretty good, actually. I like how snappy it is. It's very fast. Um... Senso uses ZBrush. I think it has a lot of awesome free features. It does have a lot of awesome features. Um, Moto is 600 a year. I didn't know that. I When I had Moto, you just bought it once and that was it. Um... Moto for the win. Yes, Moto is pretty awesome. Craig uses SketchUp. It's about when we got SketchUp in beta. We were assigned to come up with a design for the Port of Miami. I think, yeah, I do remember some kind of a, like, exhibit design project. I think mine was about Banksy or something. Lazaro was really into SketchUp. He, he was like a pro at it. I remember him building all sorts of crazy cities and architecture stuff in SketchUp. Man, this part is killing me. I'm going to take a break on that one. Save this before it dies, and oops. damn it! Yeah, I'm trying to get off of Adobe stuff lately. I don't really, I don't really use Photoshop anymore. Am I still paying for it? I think I might have canceled it. If not, I need to cancel it. Oh yeah, yeah. I I think he was he was working at the Herald. <laughs> but I think I saw him recently. He came out to LA and he was he came out for this um journalism conference. And now now he works at um the Washington Post. He's a he's a important boss man now. <laughs> Let's see, what else? These legs kind of, I need to get this shape in here. I love that color too, man, this, this would be really fun to paint. Hmm, hmm. Okay, let's go for some... Oops. Uh, okay. Like that. Okay, sculpting. Grab. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Dang, sculpting is fun. Why haven't I been... I should try to do more sculpting. Actually, I feel like maybe for the next time I do a 
a blender class or something like that, maybe it's better to start off with sculpting because I feel like in here you you, s you don't have to deal with as much of the techni technical annoying aspects of like, oh, objects versus faces and edges and it's it's a lot more free and just fun. You can just get started right away and have something sort of satisfying. Because I, I feel like when, when we start with polygons, it's like, it's really frustrating um, to, at the beginning because it's so confusing. There's so many new things you have to learn. So maybe sculpting is a better way to start. I'm going to try that for the next time we, next time there's a bl blender class or something. Guys, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun just playing with this stuff and I don't even know half of these tools. It's, okay, it's more user friendly, that's what I'll say. Sculpting is more user friendly. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You saw him and Godfrey like five years ago. It's cool. Yeah. I miss Lazaro. He's kind of crazy, but I miss him. And sculpting is more intuitive for newcomers to 3D. Yes. I agree. Why have I been not? I think because usually, usually the stuff that I'm modeling is more just products or vehicles or something like that. So the sculpting isn't that doesn't really come in handy for that. But I feel like even even though. It's nice because it limits the, the amount of tools that you need to, and the hotkeys that you need to use. It's really, you just need, once you're in sculpt mode, you're, you're just pressing these these ones and you hold shift for smooth. What is it? Um, alt or control to do the opposite of whatever the sculpt is. So it's much, much less stuff to remember. So then that, that means the that means you can focus on just getting used to navigation which is i guess uh for the first day navigation would be kind of awkward so maybe that's a good way to just get used to navigation and while you're having fun and thinking about things in 3D I think I screwed up this crab leg let me they should be connecting at the bottom, shouldn't they? Oops. So when this happens, when, when you're doing a mirror, you can also choose a different object to be your mirror. Like, for example, I want this, what is this thing called? Let's call this, um, uh, body so if I wanted this to mirror around the body I just go shift X and choose body and that allows us to have a pivot an object pivot over here which is great but then we can also use this pivot as the mirroring for these objects so for example here I might want to put the pivot there so I can rotate this thing around the pivot, but then I go shift X, change the center to the body, and that's much better. So maybe, yeah, that's another good thing to learn for somebody just starting out is like um, how to set the pivots, how to mirror stuff. Yeah. I'm dumb, I should have been doing this in the first place. Do 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 body do 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 Oops. And it, 
it, it would be like a nice way to show people how to organize their scene into different objects. Hmm. Oh. I wonder if we could paint these with vertex color. Should be able to. Let's see, glossy, glossy V, apply color. Okay, let's say we have purple here. And actually, I want a darker purple, bluish purple. And then, ooh. And then we could get a couple pieces in here. Let's grab some of these these guys right here and go shift V and I want red red there it is and what if we get a vert there we go Maybe we need more resolution before we start painting, but it's not too bad. You could even draw in a little design here and make it yellow like that. Then you would need to mirror this whole thing. I kind of like the asymmetricalness of it though, so maybe, I don't know. Oh, Dinotopo deletes vertex data, that's not good. Okay, so let's see if I go into sculpt mode, oh shit, it does delete vertex data. Damn it, I guess you have to do that at, at the last step. Oh, I guess that's, that makes sense because it's creating all these new verts. So it, it would, wouldn't be able to keep them. Oh well. Hey Andy. Good morning. Or actually it's not morning anymore. What is this? Um, for thin shapes, there's a front faces only. Oh, that's cool. ZBrush had a thing like that too. Let's see. Let me try that out. So, um, let's see if we had a very, very, very thin. I'm using control to do the opposite. And making a very very thin piece like that and then we're gonna see if there's the where is it in here somewhere probably front faces only okay oh yeah that works pretty good so we had like a paper thin little piece here if we don't have front faces only it's gonna keep it's not gonna know what to do because it's so paper thin but if we have um, front faces only, then it'll mask off the other stuff and create, uh, you know, it won't affect the back faces. That's great. Um, and 2D fall off, what does this do? Do you guys know what 2D falloff does? It's definitely doing something. So here's 3, 3D falloff and here's 2D falloff. 
Oh, okay, I think I know what it is. So the 2D fall off is probably treating the the movement in a cor like it's facing let's say there's a circle airbrush fall off and that's facing our screen so it's pushing everything into a circle facing our screen yeah versus a 3d fall off which will be more like a, a sphere I guess I don't know hmm did I see Jan's environments, yeah, they did look really cool. Well, I mean, that's basically what we did the first day with the the J Japan night scene. I think you guys could do that if you wanted to. Um, you already know how to do it. It's just some a little bit of nice lighting and um, put some water there. Yeah, you but you just use displacement on the water and. You'd be golden. Yeah, I mean, let's look at it. Let's analyze it. It's, I mean, the the tools are basic. It's more the composition and the 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 design that's hard. That's that's kind of like where his skills will come in but oh oh yeah here we go but I mean you should be able to model all this it's just planes and boxes and it's they're not complicated shapes at all The trees are cool though. I wonder where where the trees came from. Yeah. Then you got to ask him where he got gets his figures from too. Yeah, well, lighting is a whole art form. You just got to keep keep practicing and he also takes a lot of photos, which is something that a lot of really good lighters do. They just go around the city with their their fancy camera and take tons and tons of photos. And then that's how they get to see lighting very well and they, they know how to like paint with light. And um, yeah. This kind of looks like uh, it looks like either coffee or paint swirls or a, a procedural texture that's just like swirly noise it could yeah it's probably an image though it looks a little tiny bit you should just ask him just find him online and ask him how he how he did, did these textures yeah he's a nice guy Well, you guys, I think um, I think I kind of got the idea of what I wanted to do here, and I'm uh, I think this is a good experiment because I, I feel like this would be a really good exercise for the next time for for like pure beginners to to blender. I think this would be a really good way to start because it's fun, it's easy to set up, and it's quick. I mean, this this all came to go together very fast, and I'm still getting used to the sculpting tools, but they're all very self-explanatory and um, user-friendly. So I'm definitely gonna try to do more sculpting and incorporate that more into um, class stuff. But anyway, thanks for joining in. I hope this was interesting. I hope you'll give uh, sculpting a try if you haven't. But Okay guys, I'll see you next time and uh, hope you have a good day.